Hi there, everybody. I'm Aaron. Um, I make buttons. Um, I've been working on the web for about a decade, um, doing all kinds of stuff. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about CSS animation. Um, uh, animation on the web, using moderation, can be a great thing. It can add a bit of life to, to your site, can make it feel more physical, more actually there, like um, create a better sense of interaction with the users. Um, but it does need to be used sparingly. Keep it for kind of user interactions for the most part. Um, don't do big, overly complex things as a general rule, because um, it will get irritating. And lots and lots of other reasons, which I'll go into later. Um, now, uh, CS, animation and CSS can come in two shapes and forms. You've got uh, animations, which are done with keyframes, or you've got transitions. Um, I'm initially going to talk about animations, and then talk a little bit about transitions later. Uh, animations have a bit more of a complex uh, syntax, uh, whilst transitions, they, is that echoey? Okay. Cool. Um, whereas transitions have a much simpler um, syntax, but don't necessarily offer you quite as much control. Um, so let's start off with making our very first animation. Um, now, I don't know how well people can see that, um, it's not the biggest screen, but um, we start off kind of declaring uh, keyframes, and we just have a from and a to state. So in this particular case, I've got left at zero and then left at 75%. So the ball will move along. Uh, then on, can I get please? There we go. Um, and uh, then on the kind of element that we want to apply it to, we just have animation and then the main the animation, which we have up here. And we also need to set a duration. And that will be our most basic animation which is not, there we go. Um, I've set it to a non-hover effect for the overall canvas over here, but keeping some of the uh, less relevant code after the slides. So as you can see, it's nothing particularly riveting, but um, let's move on. Um, there we go. Um, so now we can add a keyframe. So we change this to um, zero, and 100%, but don't really need to. And now 50%, we're going to have to do something different. We're going to have it move 50% uh, from the top of the canvas. So, assuming this all works, there we go. Um, a little bit more interesting, but still not particularly kind of fancy. Um, but you can have as many keyframes as you like. Uh, you can actually have multiple keyframes at the same state, uh, just kind of break things out and then have kind of nested animation within that. Um, and then Let's go to this slide. Um, so now, uh, so gonna, we're adding a few more bits to it. So we've got um, iteration count set to infinite. So the animation will just continue for as long as what, how long the trigger is going for. So in this case, hover. Um, and animation direction. Uh, in this case, I put alternate, which means when it gets to the end of animation, rather than immediately jumping back to the starting state. It will kind of work its way backwards and do the animation in reverse. So we have this kind of swinging back and forth effect. Um, now, let's get to the next stage. Uh, now, you may have noticed the ball was moving around a bit weirdly. Um, that's because you get certain effects which are applied as default and aren't necessarily ones that you want. Uh, in this case, one of those is animation timing function. Uh, now I've changed that to ease in and ease out, uh, so that's a bit nicer. Uh, it's a bit of a smoother animation. Uh, you've got lots of kind of, um, there's various kind of pre-done terms, so ease, ease in, ease out, ease in, ease out. Linear and steps, um, which kind of make it jump from stage to stage. Um, but you can also do uh, a Bezier curve, um, which you've got here. And so you declare um, in the animation timing function, just cube Bezier, and then a load of values um, that don't make a whole lot of sense, quite honestly, but because I'm bad at maths. Um, and that's what those particular values translate to. Um, and if I can very, very quickly I'll switch, find my mouse, there we go. Um, I'm just going to drag this across. There we go. Um, if you wanted to kind of know more about that function, um, cubebezier.com, uh, it's all made by Livru, 
Um, it's awesome. It's how I get the values that I actually want to use. Uh, you can grab this here, you can pull it around, and you see you got um, two here, and we kind of go compare them, and that's kind of the difference of the animation. Great kind of if you really want to fine tune things, but often for most little kind of interaction animations, one of the kind of pre done states are kind of linear, ease in, ease out, or ease in out, uh, tend to do just fine. Uh, close that for now. Um, and Next. This is very, very small amount of code, but um, just kind of on the whole state, uh, animation play state, pause. There's a few different kind of states you can do. They're for a little bit of control, and you can kind of, you might want to use JavaScript to kind of interact with these to take control of your animation. Uh, it's swinging around quite happily. Uh, if I kind of hover over, I pause the animation. As soon as I kind of on hold off, kind of take the hover off, it jumps back. Um, it goes back to its initial state, but it hasn't got a fill state, which I should have in one of the following slides. Um, yeah. uh, well, I will do this so slide, just going to go back. Okay, um, now, um, something fairly basic. We're adding some, that's there we go, uh, adding some uh, colors in. Uh, as the ball already has a default value on its main star, we don't need to add a value on the kind of zero state. We don't necessarily need to add those values there either, but sometimes it can be handy to keep uh, certain bits in there just to kind of keep track of it. Uh, but gonna give it a value for kind of at the 50% stage and another one for completion. And there we go. That's reasonably pretty, but very different colors on the screen. And um, all this the way. Um, uh, um, but it doesn't look amazing. Um, as it, as it is, but so one nice, kind of nice thing we can do, um, add opacity here, and then kind of give it a bit of a kind of light opacity in the middle, and at least on my screen, it makes it look a bit nice kind of, as it kind of blurs between the colors. Um, often you find just saving a bit of opacity, kind of when you're doing some of the motion, um, can often soften the edges because of the way the opacity is calculated on moving objects. It's not done in the same way that it might be kind of happening in, say, Photoshop, um, because it kind of calculates uh, an object, basically it grabs whatever object you're making transparent, or uh, imagines it has a white background, and then puts layers over whatever it's kind of going on top of. So you don't always get this, the best kind of edges and kind of smoothness to it. Um, that's just kind of adding a little bit of extra detail. Now, that's a basic animation. Um, obviously, it's not one that you're likely to use, but it's, when it comes to animation, most of it's quite simple, it's just a case of layering up the effects that you need to get kind of the result you want. So just using the effects kind of there, you could be able to do your navigations, your tool tips, um, most kind of in, kind of common like interactions you're gonna be doing, if kind of, particularly if you work on some like e-commerce and stuff like that. Um, yeah. um, I'm gonna talk briefly about the performance side of things. Now I'm not gonna talk in great amount of detail because it could get a bit complex and I know a chunk of it, but there's people who know it better than me and can give better talks. Um, but basically when your page is rendered, um, just the initial web rendering of your website, these stages happen. Um, just for kind of laying out every kind of object, um, you know, after kind of the HTML has been passed, you're getting your JavaScript in, that's kind of doing whatever it needs to do to the page, and you can kind of um, styling, then layout, then you'll have a kind of paint and composite stage. Uh, this is kind of all the stuff that's happening in the background of the browser, and every time you move an object, it, in theory, might need to go through all of these stages again. So if you're using JavaScript um, to do your animation, it's going through all that, every time. And that can be quite processor intensive, particularly if you can um, shift kind of your animations to a mobile platform. Um, at which point, your phone will start getting very hot. Um, now, to kind of get better performance, particularly if you've got a lot of animation on your page, uh, and if you're worried about kind of uh, older devices and mobile, you want to try and remove as many of these stages as possible. Um, now, the very much the lightest kind of stage of this pretty much is a composite. Um, now, I don't I can't remember the exact details correctly, but basically, some of these stages will get passed to processor. Some of these stages get passed to um, 
direct, direct entry GPU uh, handling. So some work better than others for that reason. Uh, but basically, if you can remove as many of these stages as possible, that's awesome. So uh, if you do want to know more about it, um, Paul Lewis, Eric Twist on Twitter, uh, he's done a load of, he's done quite a few talks on it, he's done a load of tutorials and an uh, online course, it's free. Um, it goes into really great detail, particularly about kind of the debugging uh, side of it, how to use dev tools to kind of monitor what's actually happening in the background. Um, if you are planning on doing any big animation stuff, um, or you're really worried about performance, it's very, very useful. If you're planning on just doing a few kind of light like little things, you don't need to really worry about it too much, but I do highly recommend it if it's something you want to get into. Now, as I mentioned, there's kind of bits, uh, um, when it comes to animation, there's, you know, performance can be an issue. Now, there's a lot of things which can be quite heavy on performance, so if we just go back here for a second, I'm moving objects around here just by changing the left position because they're positioned relative and I'm just going to you know, increase the values. That's quite precedent intensive. That goes through the layout stage, the paint stage, and the composite stage, if I remember correctly. Um, whereas you can change that and you get the same effect um, by just kind of doing um, transforms. And so here we've got um, transform. So that's transform zero, but that's because initially we transformed it off of the initial position. Um, I've changed this. Um, this is an example of the transitions um, syntax instead of the key, keyframe syntax. Um, no reason that it's just a bit cleaner and simpler. I say it doesn't offer you quite as much control. You can't do the keyframes. So if you want to have kind of animations with multiple things going for different stages, you end up needing to stack the animations together, which can get a bit messy. But if you're doing simple animations, it can make life a lot easier. Now, uh, let's show you the demo. Now, that's the kind of thing that actually many people will use, um, as opposed to a very silly looking spinning ball. Where's the hit area that I've actually created there? There we go. Um, now, so we're translating it in. Um, well, initially, we're translating it off as soon as it loads in, but you're not seeing that. Then we're kind of translating it back to its original position, so bringing it up. Um, and we're also changing its opacity. Both of these things are um, really great, like really good for performance. They barely use any kind of resources. Um, in fact, basically everything on that side there, it's very kind of, you know, it's not browser intensive. Whereas, kind of doing, you could do the exact same effect, but by just changing uh, things like position or margins, and you would start hammering uh, performance quite quickly. And so, you have. The composition layer is the, is the very last stage. These are the only things that you can actually use that only hit the composition layer. Now, uh, it's not to say you shouldn't use anything that doesn't, you know, anything that's not on this list, but if you are using things that aren't on this list, you want to keep it very, very minimal. Um, if you go to cssTriggers.com, you can get a full list of basically all CSS, can, everything you could animate in CSS, and which of the stages it will trigger, uh, but opacity, Translate, rotation, scaling, position matrix. You can actually achieve quite a lot of stuff by combining these. Um, uh, there's a few things that are a little intensive, but depending how and where they use, it might not be too bad. Things like changing a background image doesn't trigger off that many of the things, but it can depend what's behind it, where it's getting moved to, things like that. Um, now, but for these to apply, for, the, um, for this, that statement to be true about these not being browser intensive though, they need to be um, on what's called a composition layer. Um, and the browser just kind of decides when it's building the page, I'm going to make a layer of this thing and a layer of this thing and a layer of that thing. And sometimes you can guess certain bits, but it can be a little bit random. Uh, you can use DevTools to inspect and kind of work out what one's likely to assign, but also that will probably vary a bit from browser to browser. Um, but you can uh, force it by setting element will change, um, and it will, and then you can say what kind of change it has, so transform in this case, but you can also set height, height, width, things like that, um, and at which point that's kind of just on your main styling of the element, so when the browser's pushing together the page, you go, it goes and makes that element a layer, and so you'll get much better performance of that if you're animating that object. But you shouldn't kind of throw that around everywhere because in itself, layer itself is expensive to have, just knocking around doing anything. 
So if you've now got 500 layers on the page, because you've just applied it to everything, that will actually hurt your performance just as much. Um, I've probably really underrun, because I've talked way too fast. Yeah. Uh, but questions? Yes. Yes. It's a drink water bottle at the end of the isn't it? <laughs> Hello. Hi. Um, thanks for the talk, first of all. Um, I, you kind of touched on it a little bit, um, but I, I had to write a reasonably complex timeline sequence a while ago, and the, the initial decision made by the team was, yeah, let's go with CSS animations. First of all, they were absolutely nightmare to manage and maintain. Um, and then, you know, it was actually very hard to debug prior to the animation um, debugging in uh, Croptos. Now, the question is, what do you think about libraries like GSOC? Uh, GSOC sorry. Um, do you think that they are performance enough to, to replace complex animations like, like whatever? Um, I don't know that library in particular. Um, I think it depends on the kind of stuff you're trying to do. Um, if you're trying to do basically build the kind of the, the new, this area's flash sites, with lots of things moving all over the place. Um, you've got a lot to kind of coach and maintain, then maybe some of those kinds of things will be useful. Um, generally, I'd say <coughs> debugging isn't so bad these days. It's not perfect, but um, the, the tools are a lot better. I remember first playing this CSS animation probably about four or five years ago. Uh, it was only working on a handful of browsers, and it was well, very hard to actually tell what was going on in, in the background. Um, the, the tools are a lot better now for most of the browsers. Um, no comment about Safari. Uh, but um, it's um, maintain, maintenance um, can be an issue um, depending on kind of what you're using it for. Because um, very much you need to know what your animation is going to be when you start planning it. Um, it's if you're kind of trying to have, say, dynamic content, so you have an animation which is you know transitioning through a slideshow um, uh, based like a pre-made slideshow, and, but the number of images will be changing based on CMS. That can be a bit of a pain to do, um, particularly with um, something like the keyframes, because you kind of need to know what the length of the animation is going to be from the beginning. Um, though something like the transitions would come into place more for something like that, uh, but it, then you can say you kind of lost a bit of control as well. Uh, so it really does depend on the kind of thing you're trying to animate. So there will still be times where they're not the best solution for animation, um, there's more tools being developed, uh, and the way we're going to be able to interact with them and control them a lot more is going to change a lot over the next kind of year or two. But right now, it's definitely for some things, they're not the best choice. Um, I'd say, for me, small kind of interaction animations are great for, but uh, bigger, more complex things, not necessarily the best choice. Yes. Yeah, I never heard about the wheelchair property before it is uh, um, it's pretty compatible now. Um, if you wanted to support kind of some older browsers, it's um, you may have seen um, what is it? Um, basically uh, you would set. Hold on a second. No, I did not do that. Um, yeah, a lot of people used to kind of like set set kind of animation to tell, tell it to be three D, even when it wasn't three D, because this would have the same effect. Um, now, if, right now, if you're trying to support older browsers. Basically, do both because um, the whole setting 3D to force it into becoming a layer. Um, some of the browsers are looking at deprecating that because they've seen it abused too much. Um, and whereas the uh, will change is relatively new, so I think you know for all the kind of re like current browsers, I think it has support. I'm not 100% on IE, but I'm pretty sure it is on the latest version. But if you were trying to support, say, IE9. Then yes, you would need to kind of do the old kind of hacks as well, unfortunately. But it's one extra line uh, on the things that you're intending to animate, and it's a bit more kind of uh, future comp compatible. Cheers. Um, JavaScript and animation. Do you recommend to keep everything in the CSS and not do anything? Um, I would say it, it depends what you're trying to animate, um, but also. So with CSS animations, uh, particularly with kind of some of the stuff that's 
coming soon as opposed to there right now. This is all stuff that you can do right now, um, unless somebody's asking you to support A6. Um, whereas the stuff that's uh, coming soon allows for using JavaScript to control the logic of your animations. So how like one animation, one object might interact with another. So animation state is changing. Uh, there's a certain amount of control of that right now, but there's a lot more of it coming. Um, so where where it's going is shipping off the visual side of your animations to CSS completely, uh, but the logic side of it uh, being in JavaScript. Right now, though, the two are sitting a little bit just separate. Um, so I'd say it's a case of depending on the kind of animation you do. But go, going forwards, it's going to be the two sitting side by side, but JavaScript just in the logic side of it. So you wouldn't be moving an object around in JavaScript. You wouldn't be saying change this style or move to that. You'd just be saying change to this state or that state or the other state. And then your CSS then it goes, all right, it's this state. So let's do this. Let's play this animation. Let's move through, through the sequence. Yeah, but a lot of time it's very difficult to know like the bound that you can apply the animation or something like that. But you can know whatever, how long, I mean, how many pixels or whatever you can do with the animation. So like, um, if you need to move something from left to right, like, sometimes you can't rely just on the percentage or whatever. Um, well, depending um, how you're moving it, um, so something like percentage on a transform is actually the percentage of the object you're moving, uh, which is nice in some ways, but also irritating in others. Um, but um, you can pass fixed values, you can pass the EMs, uh, you can pass a lot, and um, as I say, going forwards, you would be able to you know, have JavaScript passing the kind of logic to go move it by this many steps or move it by this much. Uh, yes, right now it's you may have to kind of pick or choose depending on, on what, it, what it is you're trying to accomplish. Um, I say for very very kind of complicated kind of stuff where there's a lot of kind of complicated logic behind animation, it's still not quite there yet. But for a lot of kind of the smaller more common day to day stuff, it's in good shape. What about the position fixed and the animation? Not sense. Like you know that if you do a transform 3D, you can. Transform to the uh, uh, position fixed element, kind of. Like, I, I encounter it a lot of time that maybe you apply an animation, a transform to the to uh, something, yeah. just to trigger the the best performance. Composite there, yeah. Yeah, and then you trans you translate something and it doesn't move or it stays in the same position. Have you ever found that problem? Um. I'm not actually sh uh, sure because they, uh, when I, I it applies to fix, uh, fix stuff, I, something very weird I tend not to use fixed position. Um, fortunately, yeah, no, but I haven't had to use it for a while. No, so I'm, just, I'm just saying I don't actually know what the state of it combined with fixed position is. Um, there might be bugs, there might not. Um, as far as I know, there isn't any kind of particular issues. Yeah. Um, just some, uh, something that I know could get a bit messy. Um, so like, um, if you're doing some, some like 3D transforms, Sometimes, some, how some of the browsers have decided to implement a 3D animation is very from browser to browser a little bit. Um, but I'm not too sure on kind of, uh, the fix stuff. <coughs> uh, I think that's it. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think someone might want to say a quick word. Uh, but cheers.